afternoon, everybody. All right. We're going to go ahead and get started with our program. So I want to start with the introduction of the board of gifts. So I will start with Ms. Deborah Walters, if you would please stand. And the board standing in the back back there. Thank you. Gia Johnson. Raymond Bennett. And Judge Sonia McKnight. And myself, thank you. At this time, I'd like to introduce our president and CEO, Ms. Dolores Cobb Jones. <laughs> Dolores Cobb Jones is the oldest daughter of William Cobb and Louise Johnson Cobb. She was born and raised in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and attended school in the Harrisburg School District until graduation. She is married to Michael Jones, and they have one daughter, Asha, that lives in Wake Forest, North Carolina, but she happens to be with us today. After graduation from high school, Dolores attended North Carolina A&T University her freshman year, then transferred to the Howard University, <laughs> where she majored in education. Upon graduation from Howard, she landed a job as a teacher in the Harrisburg School District for several years, along with completing her master's degree from Penn State University and acquiring her principal cer certification from Shippensburg University. Dolores currently serves as the CEO, founder of Grandparents Involved from the Start, Inc. Gifts, a nonprofit 5013C organization designed to provide resources, information, and support to grandparents who are in the who are the sole caregivers of school-age children between the ages of 5 to 18 years old. Gifts has been in operation since October of 2013. <laughs> <laughs> Over the past 30 years, Dolores had the pleasure of working in public education. She was a passionate teacher, a thoughtful team leader, innovative curriculum committee member, administrator, mentor, and friend to numerous upcoming educators. Within that time, she encountered many grandparents that were raising their grandchildren in schools where she worked. She observed many disturbing behaviors of children-centered by societal ills such as trauma, death, drug abuse, and abandonment. Grandparents would share with her the many severities and fears of their responsibilities of raising their grandchildren due to lack of support and resources from schools and agencies. And with that in mind, GIFTS was created to address some of those concerns. So at this time, please welcome Ms. Dolores Cobb-Jones, CEO and founder of Grandparents Involved from the Start. Thank you. I just want to um, give you an overview of what we do. Um, Grandparents of all from the start was dropped in my spirit by God. <laughs> um, and the reason why I say that is because um, I'm in the time of my life where I want to serve and I wanted to help. And in speaking to some grandparents in the schools and everything, um, I saw there was a need because they were sort of frustrated, upset, mad, you know, and just tired of raising their grandchildren because they already raised their children. So um, I thought I could step in and provide some information and resources for them. So today, this is our fourth year doing this. The very first year we wanted to do a face-to-face, -face, COVID came. So we had to pivot and try to do something else, and we did it via Zoom. So for the past three years, we've done it via Zoom. This is our first time doing it face-to-face. -face. And I am so happy that everybody turned out, and we have some, honor some wonderful honorees that we want to uh, recognize today. 
Now, some of you may ask, well, how, do, how did you select your honorees? Well, we do a lot of observations of the work that people are doing in the community. Either they're giving back, they're raising their grandchildren, or they are just there to help. So with that being said, I'm going to call Gia up to do the first door prize. So if you would get your stubs out to see if you've won. After that, we'll have a musical selection. Okay, you got your tickets out? Is everybody ready? All right. Our winner, our first winner is Tanya Jochim. Joaquin.
At this time, I'm going to call Mr. Raymond Bennett up for the introduction of the speaker. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The sun is shining. It's a beautiful day outside. We're celebrating some beautiful people, some angels in our community. Clap for them. Clap for them. Don't be stingy with the claps. Give it up for grandparents who do amazing jobs in this community. Thank you very much. I usually start everything with peace, blessings, and greetings. I'm serious about that. I think every chance, any opportunity we have a chance to celebrate beautiful people, we should take an opportunity and a chance to celebrate. I am in a room full of angels. So I'm going to start off by talking about the next person that's going to come to this microphone. <clears throat> We're celebrating her. She's one of our guest speakers tonight. Porsche, Miss Portia Bowling Jeter. Let's say it again. Don't be stingy. Give it up. Miss Jeter, I want to say this before I start. I have seen you in this community do some amazing things from afar. I didn't realize it was you until today when they said that you would be the guest speaker. So it's a pleasure and an honor to actually sit down and have a conversation with you and for us to recognize you as a guest speaker. Portia Bolin Jeter is a registered nurse who began her career 43 years ago. She worked at Hamilton Health Center for 15 years as a community health nurse and then began her hospital career at Harrisburg Hospital, which later became Pinnacle Health. Taking care of the unserved in her community was her passion, and it still is. At Pinnacle, Portia worked many years as an acute care nurse, specializing in cardiac telemetry, nursing, and same-day admission. Portia went on to receive her specialized accreditation as a certified medical surgical nurse. She furthered her nursing skills by receiving her accreditation in certified case management. After her retirement from the hospital, she sat at home for a very brief period of time, then returned to the nursing field. Oh, man. She has worked in several areas in this community and has done an amazing job. She calls her job her sunset blessing. She loves taking care of her little minions, as she calls them. Amen. In the community, she has served with compassion and dedication at every chance that she has an opportunity to. Portia has held God's beautiful boutique, bu bu bouquet for the past six years. The endeavor honors men and women of the community who work with our children in some capacity to enrich their lives. All net proceed, proceeds of this event are given to a group at the event to further their outreach for our children. Outreach. Outreach is a selfish act. But sometimes when we decide to do something for others, that is the blessing within itself. That's the gift. God gives us gifts every day. And when you take your gift and you share with others, that's the blessing. I could go on and on, but I know we are Stretch for time. So I'm going to wrap it up. Her endearing work in this community is well needed. She has dedicated years of giving back to the community. Portia is also a poet, a writer who has penned some inspirational books. Heart Prints flowing from the spirit. She's currently working on her second book. She enjoys reading, writing, and daily inspirational messages on social media and sharing them with her friends. Her favorite Bible verse is Psalms 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together.
good afternoon. Y'all better praise God up in here, because let me tell you something. No matter what we do, no matter where we serve, no matter where we go, if it ain't about God, ain't none of it worth a thing. So you best know that. I stand before you extremely humbled to be here. I don't listen all the time because I get a lot of calls to do a lot of things. Dolly said, Portia, can you come and speak? And I said, sure. And anybody who knows me knows I love to write and I love to do poetry. And I will talk about the things of God until you tell me to sit down. I didn't know I was the speaker. So <clears throat> when I came in, I was looking on the program and I said, Debbie, where am I at on here so that I can do my little thing? And she said, you're the speaker. I said, oh, well, there we go. OK. But God said, always be ready. But let me share some things with you, because no matter what, I'm going to be portion. As I look around here, I have been in this community all my life. And Lord knows I'm still on 15th Street, and I ain't going nowhere. Marsha ain't going nowhere off of Burbank Street. There's some of us that just going to be there for the duration. But I bless God in all things because I look around and I see women. And I think this is wonderful to honor grandmothers. But there are women that may not be grandmothers, they may not be mothers, but there are women who have stood in the gap for children. And so I honor every single woman in here because we have done some things. Now, in my career, my sunset career, I'm an RN school nurse and case manager at Foos Elementary, which sits in the heart of all four projects on the south side. So I have minions, and that's what I call them. They're minions. I love them, but we see problems every day. So when Dolly's talking about mothers, I deal with mothers who come to school, grandmothers who come to school that need services. Some come just as they are with bonnets and pajamas and flip-flops on, but their hearts are in the right place. They're looking for help for their children. And I would say to each one of you, before I even do what I do, that there is always a way to serve in this community. And as women, we have to give back. We cannot sit back and think that we have arrived, because we haven't. Because there's people under the bridge that need to be fed. And I know that. I've been feeding for years. There are women in shelters that need help. There are women, there are families who need things, and we have to learn how to give back. So when I think about grandmothers and women who stand in the gap, think about it. All the way back to Sarah in the Bible, all the way back to Lydia, all the way back to so many women in the Bible, even the Samaritan woman, and they thought that she was what we would call a shady lady. There are women who have done amazing things. But we have to look out for our children. Now, we women, now you know when you get to be a certain age, you have raised your children. You are so excited because now it's the time when you can sit back and relax. But sometimes God has an entirely different plan. Mothers more and more have stepped into a role of a grandmother. And sometimes when it happens, it's unexpected. We have no intentions of raising nobody else's children after we done raised our own. Let's just be truthful. We're going to love our grandbabies, hug them, give them what we're going to give them, and send them home. But that's not what happens all the time. And we find ourselves being the supportive anchor in a child's life. But what we need to understand that no matter what we do, if we put God first, even when it gets hard, even when it gets ugly, even when you say, Lord, I don't want to do this, God will help you, and it will work out. So I salute you women. I salute all the grandmothers in here that have stepped outside of themselves, listened to what God said to do, and are helping to raise their children. Because, thank you. In Proverbs 17.6, it reads, Children's children are a crown to the age, and parents are the pride of their children. And with this thought in mind, I would like to share with you a brief reading entitled, The Blessing of a Grandmother. Now, as our seasons pass us by, 
and our hair begins to change the beautiful shades of silver and white, life begins to be a journey of reflection. We are supposed to be looking through a shimmering pool of our reflecting past episodes of our lives and the lives of our children. Our grandchildren are precious gems in the crown of motherhood that we have worn for so many seasons. We can sit back and watch them grow, watch them thrive, give them nuggets of wisdom that we have shared with their parents. But wait a dang minute. Life doesn't always flow the way we thought it should be. Life happens, and sometimes it happens quickly. Situations change, and in a twinkling of an eye, a grandmother's role transitions into a parental role. You've become the anchor in a child's life, and often it happens so quickly and unexpectedly. But God was in the wings waiting. God was watching. He already knew the chapters that were going to unfold because God is the author and finisher of everything. But if the truth be told, sometimes we have to ask ourselves, God, Lord, why me? Why now? Let's just be truthful. But let me tell you why. For God knew your heart. He felt your soul when he peeked into your life. And he already knew of your love and compassion would handle all and any strife. And even though your own journey was put on pause to become the grandmother that your grandchild would need, God equipped you with every tool that you would ever need because he showered you with wisdom from above. For the Lord already knew every child would need that one special someone to lead them down the pathway of life someone to hold them and mold them and reach them to teach them that God would be with them through the good times and strike. So he sprinkled grandmothers with a dash of patience, kind of like the same way that he did Job. But he also gave grandmoms a no-nonsense spirit so their grandchildren would understand the word no. He built you for tough so that you could endure everything, whatever life brought your way. And then he humbled your spirit so that grandmothers would remember in all things, just trust God and pray. Yes, grandmothers are indeed some very special fragrant flowers that our God chose to be a shining star in fair skies and showers. May the Lord bless you for being a strong foundation on which all of your grandchildren can stand. And please remember that all that you do and all that you've done, it's just all a part of God's plan. God bless you. Thank you so much. Those amazing words. Thank you. Please give her another round of applause. And I appreciate I'm not a mother or a grandmother, but I have nine nieces and nephews. And when they need something, they call. So I appreciate you recognizing us, too. Thank you very much. So at this time, I'd like to acknowledge the former wisdom, Women of Wisdom honorees, as um, Ms. Dolly said, we are in our fourth season of this program. And so I'm going to start with our first season of the 2020. And the honorees that year were Karen Fields, Kim Hurst, Cedra Washington, and Portia Wade. If any of you ladies are in the building today, would you please stand up at this time? Thank you. Our 2021 nominee, our um, honorees, sorry, were Ebony Anderson, Celeste Atkins, April Davenport, Michelle Elby, and Beverly Taylor. If any of you ladies are in the building, would you please stand up? Our 
Our 2022 honorees, Ilana Gonzalez, um, Dolores Robinson, Lynette Polite, Michelle Archie, and Pandora Mil Middleton. If any of you ladies are in the building, please stand up. And as somebody whose names gets butchered quite often, I apologize to any of you ladies if I butchered yours today. It's charge it to my head and not my heart. So at this time, I'd like to call Gia back up for the fun stuff. So Gia, if you can come back up with another prize. So get your tickets out and get ready. So everybody ready? All right. Our winner this time is, is it Laron Elby? Did I say that right? Let me spell it. L-A-R-I-S-A. Is that right? All right, there is another opportunity, so do not fret. You have one more opportunity to win a prize. So at this time, I'm going to call up um, Debbie Waters, and she is going to recognize our great-grandmothers. Good afternoon, everyone. Like everybody said, it's a beautiful crowd. Thank you for coming. The first grandmother, first grandmother I'm going to acknowledge is Marion Elby. Hold on, I'm going to read. Okay, so I can't read. <clears throat> Marion Elby has blessed many family and friends and community with her loving spirit. She was born on February 15, 1943 in Carlisle, PA, where she currently resides. She's a member of Turner Memorial Baptist Church in Stilton, PA, where the Reverend Richard Hampton is her pastor. She is a proud mother of three children, 11 grandchildren, 17 great-grandchildren, all who affectionately love their Nana time and know they can call her any day or night. She is always there to listen. She has been involved with the prison ministry in several prisons for the past 30 years and currently ministering at the Cumberland County in Carlisle. Her favorite thing is serving the Lord as best as she can. I'm going to give her a... It says, Women of Wisdom, Marion Elby, Grandparents involved from the start, gifts. I'm grateful for this, and also I'm very grateful for all my grandchildren. They are all in my life. I asked the Lord when I turned 80 that I wanted to have something where all my grandkids could be together. And it was a, a joy for me to see them all. That's the two of them right there. <laughs> but anyhow, I'm grateful for this. Thank you very much. Our next person is Claudette Hankerson, my cousin. Claudette, known as neat to many family and friends, is the wife of Eugene Hankerson. They have been married 43 years and have been foster care parents for more than 30 years. They have 11 children, seven girls, and four boys. They are blessed to have 17 grandchildren and two great-grandchildren. Claudette retired from the State Library with 20 years of service. She also had a daycare for 20 years named J. Lynn Daycare. And I believe that's after your granddaughter. Right. She worked as a youth advocate, behavioral tech, parent educator, and at the present time, working as a caretaker for her best friend. Claudette truly enjoys being with her family and friends. Their home is where all come together and is known as a strong family that always have each other's back no matter what. And I know that's true. She likes to spend time, her free time with the ones she loves the most. She likes to play spades, tonk, and enjoys cooking and loves to take long walks. She also likes going to sight and sound to see plays, 
Claudette feels God has blessed her a million times over with the people he brought into her life. Thank you. And Claudette's plaque says the same thing as Miss Marion. I just want to thank my family, my grandkids, and my great grandkids, and all my friends that have come out today to, <laughs> to support me. Thank you all. And last but not least, with the great grandparents, Tanja Adrena Fields Jackson. Tanja Adrena Fields Jackson was born on June 19, 1951, to Ro Rosalina and Calvin Fields Sr. She is the youngest of four siblings Calvin Jr., Helen, which they called her Patty, Charles, they called him Blue, Fields Sr. Tanja was lovingly raised by her father, Calvin Fields Sr., and her grandmother, Helen Fields Henry. Tanja graduated from John Harris High School, the Pioneers, in 1970. She attended Harrisburg Community College while employed at the U.S. Postal Service, previously located on Market Street. Tanja was a very reliant young lady. At the age of 15, she started earning more money than thought possible, $1.15 an hour while employed at Mr. Donut, previously located on Jonestown Road, Harrisburg. Tanja started moving up in her economic status with employment opportunities at New Cumberland Army Depot, AMP Incorporated, Pay Prescriptions, PA Blue Shield, and the U.S. Postal Services. Tanja took a mommy hiatus to venture into a world that enriched her life in ways she never visualized. That new world was called Latasha Cherie Jackson Moore. After a couple of years, Tanja and Letitia, Latasha decided to broaden their horizons and step out into the new world. Latasha went to Kitty College Nursery and her mommy launched into a 24 year career with the Commonwealth of PA as a purchasing administrator. Among Tanja's accomplishments, she makes it known that her greatest accomplishments are being mother, grandmother, and most recently, her adorable, adorable great-granddaughter, Alea Rose Carter. According to Tanja, people often remind her that the fondness she has for children remind them of their grandmother, of her grandmother, Helen Henry. As like her grandmother, Tanja could always be found with not only her grandchildren, but any child she felt needed a little touch of grandma. You can come forward. And Tanja's plaque says the same thing as Ms. Elby. You want to say something? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Debbie. I'd like to take a moment to thank the committee for selecting me. I don't know what I possibly did to get selected, but I guess what she said. <laughs> it's true. And as a proof of it, I got my daughter here, my only child, one of my granddaughters, Lenise, my eldest granddaughter, Tiana, and my great granddaughter, Ayla Rose. All right. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all you ladies. And that's the end of my um, presentation. But I also I want to acknowledge my mom just to say that she has nine grandchildren, 14 great grandchildren, and seven great great grands. Thank you, mom. Can we give those ladies another round of applause? Thank you. At this time, I'm going to bring to the podium Ms. Dolores Cobb-Jones, and she's going to do the honors of presenting the 2023 Women of Wisdom Awards. So our first grandmother, uh, Maria Adorno, could not be here with us today. So I'm just going to ask that you keep her in prayer. Her daughter passed about two months ago. And she is raising her five children. Her youngest brother 
passed recently, and he had two little ones, and she's taking care of them also. So just keep her in your prayers. Um, we will make sure that she receives all of her gifts, but she just couldn't be with us today. Okay. Tracy Hicks. <laughs> Tracy was born and raised in Harrisburg, PA. She graduated from Susquehanna High School. After high school, Tracy began working in the healthcare field and is a certified nursing assistant and med technician. She has worked with visiting angels, home health care, and several other nursing facilities. Tracy has spent most of her career caring for others. If you ask her, she doesn't mind letting you know just how long she has been in the profession. Tracy has six grandchildren. Three of them are currently in her care. She encourages the children as they participate in dance, basketball, and other community events. They enjoy attending Hershey Park, the indoor water park, and Mass Nutton Indoor Water Park and the Philadelphia Zoo. She loves preparing for family events with her sisters and is excellent at rushing them so she can share her skills as the permanent food taste tester. In her own way, she has a very specialized skill set. Tracy knows that raising the grandchildren isn't always easy, but with the help of friends and family, the experience has become very rewarding. Miss Hicks. Hold on. Let me put this down for a minute. First of all, I want to thank God for waking me up this morning. Second of all, I want to thank my family and Miss Della Reese for allowing me to be a grandparent gift in the program. And if any of y'all want to cook, I'm a good taste tester, okay? <laughs> so I just want to thank everybody and my family for coming and sharing this moment with me. Thank you. <laughs> this is the award that the grandmothers will receive. Each one of them have one of these. Jacqueline Jenkins. My mother left our home when I was five. Before she left, she taught me Psalm 23. I did not realize the significance until much older. Why? Even though my sister took care of us, there were nine of them. The street had a great influence of our behavior free-spirited. We attended the Mount Moriah Baptist Church directly across the street from our house. A lot of bad negative things happened to us, but we were survivors. One thing we all had was love for each other. Because I am a survivor is why I am an advocate for children. I know what they are missing. I adopted four of my youngest son's children in foster care from Phoenix, Arizona in 2011. They were one, three, seven, and 10. The oldest two, Lillian and Lloyd, have graduated and working with the two youngest. She also wants to take this opportunity to ask all of you to look at the many issues that our children need. And one issue that she is paying very close attention to is cursive writing to be mandated in kindergarten and first grade. She wants to express the importance of self-identity and a proper learning window, discipline, and structure so that the next grade teachers can teach without having obstacles, negative behavioral problems, because they do not understand that they should have been taught certain elementary learnings, such as cursive writing. Yeah. 
Hello? Thank you, Dollar S. It's emotional. I want to thank my sister, who was one of the, uh, my sisters that when my mom left, she had to take care. And I want to thank God most of all for Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. He's a deliverer in the name of Jesus. I want to take this opportunity to ask all of you who have children to make sure that they are getting in the proper window, learning window, cursive writing. You can't, I was in my uh, uh, middle school child's uh, conference and his teacher said that he wrote out instructions and printed them out and gave them to all his students for the a class project. They all brought them back to him and said, we do not read cursive or write cursive. I looked at my oldest who graduated. I looked at his writing and, and, and I said, who, how you get your grades? You know, and he was gifted on a roll, you know, student. I said, how are you passing? What are these, these teachers can't read? And he just looked up at me and smiled. Like he didn't know what he was supposed to know, what he was supposed to be doing. So I had contacted Jill Biden. Because I'm a postal uh, a retiree, I know how to get a letter through. <laughs> she responded back to me a couple weeks before her husband went on for national speech thing and she said in her personal letter to me what he was saying in his national address so they are being uh the statistics that our children they're in trouble very much in trouble and it's not the only thing that's wrong but is one thing that's wrong they do not teach cursive writing in kindergarten and first grade where there is the learning window. You can't wait till they get down to 10 and 12 years old and want them to find something out that they should have learned when they were four and five. So I thank God for Jesus. I thank him for this opportunity. And I ask you all that you pay attention to the local uh, voting, the people that you put on the school boards. You educators, I applaud you. Thank you for your service. But they are not mandating cursive writing where it should be put in kindergarten and first grade. And the behavior of our children, the courts, I have my own troubles and I'm going through. I wasn't going to show up today because I had issues with going through. But I thank God that he changed my mind, that I'm not alone, and that I don't have to put on no airs about who I am and what I'm doing. I'm an advocate for the children, and we need to pay attention to these children that are running around the streets in their flip-flops and the things they are out of school. They ain't take, listen, it is hard. It takes this, it takes psychology, to deal with these children because our children are having children and they're not training them when they need to be trained. So I thank God for the opportunity. Y'all be blessed. We go to the same church, Shiloh Church of God in Christ. Amen. <laughs> okay, our next honoree is Deborah McLean. Deb took over as the executive director of Beacon Clinic for Health and Hope in late August 2018 bringing more than 30 years of experience as a licensed insurance and financial services professional with her. She has served in various servant leadership roles, including the former director 
of the Hand Up Ministry for the Homeless through Metropolitan Community Church of the Spirit and former volunteer, president, and CEO of the Central Pennsylvania Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce, now known as the Keystone Business Alliance. Deb was formerly active on Governor Tom Wolf's advisory board on energy, business, and economic development. Deb is inspired by the amazing people who serve vulnerable populations alongside her, making a positive impact in the lives of others. In her free time, Deb enjoys spending time with her family and pets, doing jigsaw puzzles, singing, sewing, and gardening. Ms. McLean. I'd like to thank my daughter, who made me a grandmother for the first time, who's here today, Aubrey Montgomery, and my wife, Lynn Rutherford, who grandmothers with me and supports all my nonprofit passion work. You know, at this point in time of my life, after spending all many, many years of my life in the business insurance sector and risk management, to be able to really act on a call on my life to serve others that are marginalized by situations that they didn't put themselves in. And I thank Jackie Jenkins, who comes and does special projects with us at Beacon Clinic, and Miss Jackie Marshall, who's over there too, who also comes and serves. So I'm just so grateful and thankful and um, blessed to be honored here today. So thank you all for what you're doing to serve your families and the community. And thank you, Dolores, for this honor. And finally, Ms. Helen Spence. <laughs> Helen is a graduate from Temple University, and she worked as a protective caseworker for Chester County Children and Youth. She was employed by the Philadelphia County Juvenile Probation Department. She received the Probation Officer of the Year Award from the Philadelphia Juvenile Probation Department. Her and her husband have four sons, and they relocated to Harrisburg. But while adding on to the family, they adopted five more boys who have truly blessed and enriched their lives. She now works as the Dauphin County System of Care Community Liaison Specialist. Over the past 12 years, it has been a true blessing to empower families, youth, and communities to focus on their natural collective strengths to create solutions for the concerns they face. To date, Dauphin County now has five systems of care subcommittee groups consisting of over 300 members that come together monthly to look at ways they can utilize their expertise, resources, services, and supports to assist with people in need that come to the attention of the child welfare systems or in need in the community. And I call Miss Helen, she don't know it yet, but I call her the grandma of Harrisburg. And the reason why I'm calling her that is every time I call her for anything, she knows where, if she doesn't have it, she knows where to tell me to go get it. And I truly, truly appreciate that. So, Ms. Spence. Thank you, Ms. Velarez. Thank you so much, everyone. It is just a pleasure to be here and an honor to see all of you wonderful, wonderful women and grandmothers and, it, you know, it's just a joy to be here today. And um, I look forward to uh, being a wealth of information, each one reach one and teach one as we move forward in life and, and continue to connect uh, the resources, services, and supports that everyone needs. We can do it to together. We can make a, a difference. It is a village that we need. And the village is here right now. And, and, and we can continue that work again, each one reach one and teach one. And let's do that as we continue to raise our grandchildren, our great grandchildren, or just our children in the community. Um, they are our children. You know, it's easy to kind of look at the, what's going on in our community and say, oh, it's about, oh, this is horrible. 
but look at ourselves. Look at the man in the mirror. Look at the person in the mirror and say, well, what can I do? You know, let's look at what we can do. And you all have been a part of that. Just being here and hearing the stories has showed that you are that person in the mirror that's making a difference. And I thank all of you for all that you do. Thank you so much. Can we give all those ladies another round of applause, please? Yeah, I have to echo what Raymond said earlier. I mean, a room full of angels. I, it took everything for me not to start bawling over there about the stories and the amazing work that is going on just in this room. So imagine all the people who are not here who are still doing amazing work and just as she just said, the connections are important. So I can't, I, I just can't even say enough about it. I don't even live in Harrisburg, um, but I'm so connected to it. My family is from Harrisburg. You probably know my family. <laughs> this, every time I go somewhere, everybody's like, are you so-and-so's daughter? Are you so-and-so's granddaughter? So it's such a small community to me. I just, I look at Harrisburg as a place that's just, it's home, right? And everybody knows everybody. Everybody's connected to everybody. So there's nothing that you can't do together. And so just remember that as you move forward. So I'm, I'm done with my speech. I was just so inspired by everybody else. I had to get that out. And so at this time, I'm going to call up Judge McKnight, and she's going to do the announcement of proclamations. This is from State Representative of the House of Rep Representation, Representative, I apologize, a 104th Legislative District, Dave Madison. The House of Representatives citation. Whereas the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania is always proud to recognize those individuals who through their hard work and selflessness have made positive impacts in their families and communities. And whereas Maria Adorno has been recognized as a woman of wisdom and is committed to the highest level of service to those in her home and around her community. And whereas Maria Adorno has demonstrated the highest ideals of a mother, a grandmother, and a role model and is truly deserving of special recognition. Now, therefore, the House of Representatives of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania pays tribute to Maria Adorno in acknowledgement of her unwavering dedication and service to her children and grandchildren and her community, and directs that a copy of this citation sponsored by the House by the Honorable David A. Madison, represented to Maria Adorno of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania on this day of May 6, 2023. Now we all know uh, why she is not here on today, but I'm gonna ask that all of us please keep her in your prayers and in your thoughts um, as she goes through this, this time of, of, um, of need. So, uh, that's just uh, keep her lifted up. I want you all to know that I love each and every one of you. I'm a grandparent and a grandparent, great grandparent as well. I know I don't look like it, but I am. <laughs> so again, to all of you beautiful ladies, and as Mr. Bennett has said, all of you angels, I want to say God bless you all. And to all of you, enjoy the rest of your day. I love you and take care. God bless. So she has. Yes, yes. Oh, and I apologize. The citation that I did read, each and every one of you grandparents will be receiving one as well. Okay? God bless you. Danielle has her heart. And we have one more person that will be reading a proclamation, and that is none other than our own Harrisburg City Council president, Miss Danielle Bowers. Give her a hand as she comes forward. I call her Mrs. President. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'd like to thank Ms. Dolly for the invitation to participate. It's so exciting that we're in person. So I remember when we started via COVID, we were masked and gloved and hand delivering the gifts, honorees, awards. So I'm so excited to see the room filled with familiar faces and congratulations to the honorees. I'd just like to begin by offering greetings on behalf of the city of Harrisburg, Mayor Wanda R.D. Williams, and my colleagues that serve alongside of me on Harrisburg City Council. Congratulations to the great grandmothers that were recognized today. My aunt, Miss Marion Elby, Mrs. Claudette Hankerson, and Miss Tanja Fields Jackson. Congratulations, ladies. I'd also like to recognize the 2023 Women of Wisdom honorees, Ms. Tracy Higgs, Ms. Jacqueline Jenkins, Ms. Deborah McLean, Ms. Helen Spence, and Ms. Maria Adorno in her absence. Um, I will be reading a proclamation, but I'd like to note that all honorees have received a personalized proclamation from Harrisburg City Council in your award packages. So please indulge me. I'm going to be reading Ms. Maria Adorno's for your hearing. The city of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania incorporated March 19th, 1860 Office of City Council and Office of City Clerk. Proclamation. Whereas on this sixth day of May, 2023, in honor of women of wisdom, grandmothers involved, excuse me, grandparents involved from the start, also known as Gifts Incorporated, it is with gratitude and love and by the grace of God that we recognize and celebrate a phenomenal woman indeed, Miss Maria Adorno. And whereas Miss Adorno is the mother of four children, Alberto, Michael, Crystal, and Jessica, and the grandmother of 18 grandchildren, and due to the passing of her only brother is also the caretaker for his two young children. And whereas Miss Adorno experienced the unexpected early passing of her daughter Jessica on January 20th from the result of a seizure, a seizure and head trauma due to a fall as a result from the seizure. And on January 23rd, Jessica's 31st birthday, she gave another chance at life to two men through the donation of her kidneys. And whereas, yes. Whereas Miss Adorno's faith continues to give her the strength to care for and provide for seven children and 18 grandchildren, which she will not hesitate to do anything for. And whereas Miss Adorno continues to make continual sacrifices for her family while she continues to mourn and grieve her loving and kind-hearted daughter. And whereas the magnitude of this loss has deepened her desire to be the best grandparent she can be, thus fulfilling the vision of gifts, which is to become more involved, more inspired, and more involved with the daily challenges that one faces when parenting their grandchildren. And whereas Miss Adorno finds solace and encouragement in knowing that this is the plan and purpose that God has for her life. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that on behalf of Harrisburg City Council, I, Danielle L. Bowers, extend my sincere appreciation and recognition to Ms. Maria, Ad Maria Adorno for her unwavering commitment and dedication to loving and caring for her grandchildren. And be it further proclaimed that I, Danielle L. Bowers, may never know all of the reasons why or how one becomes a parent to a grandchild. But I give you my utmost esteem and admiration for a life filled with sacrifice and lived with humility. My prayer on this day is that the world be filled with more remarkable and resilient women like you. Signed and attested in the city of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Michael J. Parker, City Clerk, Danielle L. Bowers, Harrisburg City Council. Thank you very much for the opportunity to participate. Enjoy the remainder of the program. Noticed you from across the room. 
excuse me, miss, don't take this wrong. I couldn't resist that smile, those beautiful eyes. I can see that you're wearing fancy clothes, you drive a fancy car. Superstar, we take you out to dinner, baby. Cause there's something that I want to say to you. Love is all I, all I have. Sing with me. I have to give, I have to give my love. And I may not have a sailboat and a big old mansion, oh no, but I do know how to love you, baby, and in my own way, my own way, I'm rich as hell, I really hope that none of this don't matter, you don't judge a man by his status and I was wondering if you and I could get together know each other better I promise you I'll give my all and make my heart to mention I give you all I have love is all I have oh you know what it Thank you. I had to come back up here because my mother is in the room. And so I said something about everybody else and I didn't acknowledge her. So, you know, that is definitely not charged to my heart, but to, you know. So that's my mother, Miss Elaine McPherson. <laughs> I love you, mom. I know you already forgiven me. Miss Mary Waters. <laughs> Congratulations to our, all our winners today, all our honorees. Um, we are coming to the end of our program, ladies and gentlemen. And so to close us out, I am going to call our esteemed uh, Ms. Dolores Cobb-Jones, founder and CEO of Gifts, back to the podium to talk about some upcoming events and to give some closing remarks. Okay, folks, we are coming to the close of the program. Uh, hmm, here we go. Some upcoming events that you can take your grandchildren to, as well as yourself, is on May 17th, I'm sorry, May 11th, next Thursday, we are having a Zoom session with an attorney who is going to talk about custody. Uh, some of the grandparents have a lot of questions about that. So we're going to have an inf information session 
and you can see me or contact me with reference to the Zoom sign on. Secondly, I would like to thank our sponsors, <clears throat> Dauphin County Commissioners. You saw Commissioner Hartwick here earlier, Patty Kim's office. There are two representatives from her office. If they are still here, if you can just stand or wave your hand. Uh, the National Council of Negro Women, NCNW. We have a greater Harrisburg section, and we just started it. So if you're interested in joining that, you can see either myself or Deb Waters. Harrisburg alumni of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Now, you know they're having an event that already started at 3 o'clock. So when I leave here, I'm going there to support them because they supported me. Um, and also the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated Epsilon Sigma Omega Chapter here in Harrisburg. If any of them are here, if they would stand or wave their hand. Okay. So... <laughs> And also Harrisburg's Woodland Auto Group. Those were all the sponsors that helped support us to uh, do this event today. And we truly, truly, truly appreciate it. And we thank you so, so much. Um, I also want to thank uh, the event coordinator, Ms. Deborah Waters. You will stand. <laughs> Look, me and her fussed. <laughs> we went back and forth, we text, we email, we came up here, you know, but we pulled it off. And we are so thank you. Thankful. <clears throat> I'd also like to thank the Farm Show. They were so accommodating to us. Um, the program participants. And finally, I want to thank you for coming out. We truly appreciate it. Now, next year, we're going to do it again. We don't know where. We might be here, we may not, we don't know. But we're gonna do it again next year. And um, I also want to say, remember that on May 16th, please vote, you know, as uh, Ms. Uh, Jenkins said, you know, there's a lot of people running for school board and uh, district justice. And if there's anybody in here that's running for an office, please stand so they know who you are, they know your face. Ms. Daniel Bowers. Okay, so please vote on May 16th. And finally, be informed, be involved, and be inspired. Thank you, and have a good afternoon. Jackbox and Jersey.